Hi, we're back in my garage and that can only mean one thing. Yes, we're cleaning up the garage. Yes, I know you've already seen this video about me cleaning the garage. I feel like I've done several garage cleaning videos that nobody cares about and I totally get that, but I have to do it so I might as well make a video on it. How does this happen? How do we get to the spot where the garage is just in this disaster state all the time? Well, prior to Luckett's, you kind of just don't care. You have goals, you have tasks that need to get done for the show. So obviously the garage got destroyed during Luckett's prep. And when we got back from Luckett's, we could care about the state of the garage even less. So anything that wasn't a priority at the time kind of just got dumped down here. And now the chickens have come home to roost. So we are going to be cleaning up the garage today. It's actually probably gonna take two days because it's, it's pretty bad. There's inventory down here that really just needs to be cleaned, priced, and taken to the booth, or cleaned and priced and held for next season or winter. There's projects down here that I really need to start tackling. There's also things down here that could just be thrown away or donated, and maybe a few pieces that I could put on Facebook Marketplace for a quick buck. That is what we're gonna be doing. I know you're excited. I can sense it through the camera screen. I'm just as excited as you are. I'm picking like the hottest week of the year to do this. <laughs> sorting through inventory stuff today. I have some boxes here of some yard sale finds that I found that I really, I just need to lay out and look at and make sure they're all good. If they're not, I'm gonna donate them or possibly toss them if they're broken. Well, basically what I did here, let me explain that first. I have uh, that metal cart that I've been using to work on stuff over there. And then I set up some saw horses and some wood and then I have this aluminum table here. I just wanna lay stuff out and see what I have. It's hard when it's all in boxes and scattered all over the place. So that's really what I need to do. It's not gonna be all of it. There's stuff I, I know for sure I'm gonna keep that's kinda of over here and over here. It'll just be a bunch of smaller items that have been out of sight, out of mind. And I think we can all <laughs> relate to that. We have our, our doom piles and I don't know why or how it happens that it just you get a box and then you forget about that box so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna bring out the boxes that we forgot about lay this stuff out see what we have and go from there I did not know I had these. These are signed P. Buckley moss prints. At least these two are. And then this one looks like a Mary Lane winter scene. I had no clue I had these. Oh my gosh. I don't know what this is. Not signed. Kind of has some weight to it. A little sailboat. That's so cute. I had no clue I had this. Another signed print. Oh gosh. What's in this? Ooh. Now that's real, that's a painting. You can see the texture on the paper, signed. I'll need to research this a little bit. I 
don't need to do any more sourcing anytime soon. I have plenty here to stock the booth with. I mean, I didn't even know that I had these brass candlesticks before I found them in that box. There's a mix of things here for sure. So lots of pots, all these mugs. I mean, I found those all at a yard sale. I have a bunch of wooden clocks that I've kind of been saving for like a fall display. And I think what I wanna do now is just go through this inventory stash that I have on this table and really separate it into items that need to go to the booth now or within the next week. Pieces that are being hoarded for a fall reset and then I think there's probably some pieces in here too that I could save for Christmas. I know a lot of people don't do that but I really try to create just collections of items and things that I think will look best together and I really think when I have a collection put together pieces tend to sell better and I feel like I can get a little bit more and the booth just looks more cohesive in general so I think that's what I'm gonna do next I'm gonna go through I'm gonna section this off into different little collections and from there I'll start the cleaning process I also really desperately need to go through these back two shelves and organize it is very loosely organized right now I got like tools up here paint here but it's not good it's not good so that needs to be organized as well so that is what we're gonna do today Oof. okay it's a lot all right let's get started uh, i was right about oh i'm not in even in frame here uh i was just about to start separating stuff and then i finally decided to take a closer look at this tapestry i don't even remember where i found it i'm just looking at it i'm looking at the kind of design and the structure and everything and i read the tag which is almost worn off and it's i'm gonna i'm gonna screw this up hold on goblies it's g-o-b-l-y-s goblies made in france i uh just did a quick google search and oh my gosh these are kind of pricey one for 75 that's probably the cheapest one i've seen the 33 inch by 20 inch is 549 oh my gosh this one's 327 i mean some of these are like in the thousands of dollars like 1800 1500 anyways so i have one of these tapestries i guess i'll let you look at it it's beautiful like it's a very beautiful tapestry and it has the pocket back here for you to put the rod through to display it i was gonna make a pillow out of it i'm not gonna do that now obviously check your tapestries because oh my gosh but i i'm serious i was planning on making a pillow out of it this is a psa to do your research Woo! that was a close one and I'm in focus. I don't know. I feel like I'm not. Hold on. All right, so the last thing that we need to do today is to go through this box. Now, y'all know that sometimes I pick up some weird stuff that I find interesting and other people definitely do not. I feel like this is the definition of that situation because what we have in this box is a bunch of insect displays. <laughs> oh, that's not in focus at all. Hold on. I know insect displays is not even close to the correct terminology, but um, I don't really care right now. Oh my gosh, I'm blurry again. So we have a bunch of those to go through, like this whole box. And I just, when I picked this box up from auction, I didn't have a problem with it, all these dead bugs, right? But then I just barely went through the box and there were live bugs in the box. And so that really freaked me out and I haven't touched it since. So I, I'm forcing myself to go through and organize what's here and then clean as much as I can. It's a big box of bugs. So I'm just gonna adjust the camera so you can see what I'm seeing and we'll go from there. Oh, look what I just found in the box. It's a college student certificate selective service system for June 15th, 1953 for a Frank Klein Jr. Oh, Bridgewater, Bridgewater College from 1953. Oh, that's so cool. Ah! 
Oh, I don't know how, if many of those can be saved. Made in Tampa, Florida. Oh, those are kind of in better shape. Maybe I could switch a few in this box that are still in decent shape over here. Ooh, it's kind of cool. There's still so many blank pages here that could be used. I always say that and I never end up keeping anything. How to use a key on naming insects is what it says at the top of this page. Key list to specimens supplied with the principal order of insects. Oh, I don't know if I can save that. It's kind of really beat up down here on this wing. This box doesn't look too bad. They're all in pretty good shape. Do you see how I'm sa what I'm saying though? Like, it's so dirty. I need to clean them. If I'm gonna try and sell bugs, the least I could do is make them look better than this. All right, this box is kind of scary. I can't see what's inside. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, there's some beautiful ones in here. There's a few that look like I can't save them, so I'll take them out. Ooh, so far so good, guys. No live bugs. Should I put a trigger warning on this video? Let's stall opening these bugs and see what this says. This was, it was written in 1939 through the Commonwealth of Virginia State Board of Education in Richmond. That's kind of gibberish. I don't know what they're trying to say there. What does this say? The first line is your interpretation of sheet number six and sheet number 11 is correct. All right, let's, uh, let's stop stalling and open this box. <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that prey mantis. There's some interesting ones, some more beetles. Grasshopper, the prey mantis. I think I could probably save a few, but there's a lot in here that are busted. I need some needle nose pliers. Oh, there's a stick bug in there. See that right there? Let me get some needle nose pliers. I think I'm gonna see what I can do here. Oh geez, okay. Gonna have to approach this box differently. We gotta move on. I'm going to be organizing these shells the best I can. Now that I have the inventory organized, I got the spring inventory over there on that little blue table and basically all the furniture in that area. Then I have fall inventory on the palette and then I kind of have like a transition inventory here on the little aluminum table. And that leaves us the shop island is what I'm calling it free along with the sawhorse and wood top table. Um, and what I'm gonna do is just clear off these shelves, throw away any trash that I can, just organize it as much as possible, and then put it back. This part's gonna be pretty boring to you guys. I'm probably gonna listen to some podcasts <laughs> while I do this. Am I still blurry? Probably. Cause movie stars party on down the street. We're 
Mary Jane good cocaine. Oh, it feels so good to have that done. I feel like I can move forward now. All right, my thoughts on all this. I don't need to buy any more screws. Not one more hammer, no more paint brushes. I have everything that I need. I basically own a mini Lowe's. So many repeat purchases just because I didn't know I had it because it was such chaos back there. I really actually, when I started this whole thing, I had not planned on organizing those shelves as much as I did. I was like, oh, it's only gonna take like two days to clean this up and organize it and make it functional. But as I got into it, I was just like, I really need to organize these tools and actually make it functional on these shelves, make it make sense. Now it's not perfect. Ideally, I would love like a $3,000 tool chest that but that's not reality for me right now. Maybe eventually down the line, or maybe I'll find something at auction. That would be nice. But for now, we got these shelves, and they work. And I, if I need a little more organization, you saw what I did. I used tubs, I used boxes. There's actually a few planners back there that I was just gonna donate but ended up using for holding brushes. Like I mentioned last week, I'm really trying to work through the doom pile and the inventory I have. This is all great inventory that I have right here that I need to clean and fix and price and put in my booth. Garage clean out videos aren't always the most fun videos, but I mean, it, it was necessary for me to be able to move on to other things. And if I didn't get it on camera, there wasn't gonna be a video. <laughs> so I, I don't know, for me, this works, I can see everything, and of course now we can just use this garage down here in general to hang out. It's really hot right now, we're going through a little bit of a heat wave, so Mike and I, it's been nice to just have a place to sit in a cooler area. It's, it's a lot cooler down here. So it's good to get that back. If you take away anything from this video, especially if you're an antique vintage booth owner or have a resale business, uh, I know that we all struggle with buying and hoarding. Be honest with yourself, you struggle. You struggle, don't you? Yes, you do. I know you do, because we're the same. We got the picking bug. And if you don't struggle, uh, what's your secret? Because we'd all love to know. Please comment your secret to not struggling with buying and hoarding down below, because I would love to hear it. Anyways, I struggle with this a lot, and so I'm really just trying to get it under control and tackle it and make some money. This is all money just sitting here that I could actually be turning into physical dollars. Why am I not doing that? And I think capturing all this on video kind of will help keep me accountable through you guys. Also, I'm just, I'm not the only person that lives in this house and I think, it's not that it's disrespectful, but it's not respectful to, to the other person living here to take up so much space. And I mean, I guess you could say, well, he's invested in this business as well, as you can see from that Luckett's video and just all the other videos that he's participated in. But he did not, sign up for this, technically. Like, he did not get the business license, he didn't get the booth, he didn't, you know, s start doing this business, and so I can't expect him to just put up with it. I need to be respectful of, like, he probably wants to use this space as well for things, and I can't just dominate it with my problem. <laughs> yeah. There we go. That's kind of my final thoughts on all this. And like I said, it's not perfect. There's like a wood pile over here, leftover wood from when the house was renovated back before we purchased it. I have leftover pieces I just can't get rid of because I might need it for something. And so really, I just, I kind of have to leave all that there for now until I can figure out a better solution for it. But I was not gonna be able to do that in this video. I really just wanted to work with what I had. I didn't wanna spend a dime on anything organizational. I had two storage units and I've actually already eliminated one. I forced myself to get rid of one. I've piled everything into one storage unit. It really isn't as much as I thought I had, especially after Luckett's. Just get one rid of one and, and, it, and that's good like I can't fill up that space because I no longer have it and so that's one way I'm, I'm just trying to be more responsible with this eliminating the spaces to force myself to work through what I have do you have a doom pile are you working through it will you work through it after this video there's actually someone you guys might really enjoy this it's called the get thrifty podcast uh, it's on Spotify it, it might be on Apple as well, was that iTunes? I don't know. 
but it's on Spotify. The first episode that I ever listened to was episode 87, and it's titled, How to Turn Your Death Pile into a Money Pile with Diana Fella. Here's our Instagram, it's called Death Pile Diva if you can see that there. And I would highly recommend that you go follow her because she gives a lot of great tips, a lot of encouragement on how to work through those hordes. Guys, that is it for this video. I hope you liked it. I know it wasn't super exciting, wasn't super aesthetically pleasing, but for me, oh, I feel great. I feel great right now. I'm so happy this is done. I can move forward. I can try and make some money. I'll see y'all next time. Bye.